hello friends let us now learn some important points about the hereditary spirocytosis so in hereditary spirocytosis first the membrane first we will learn some important points about the membrane skeleton of rbc membrane skeleton of rbc contains four main proteins so it contains four main proteins yeah membrane skeleton of rbc contains four main proteins first spectrin which is a speech a chief protein component most important protein component is spectrin and this spectrin is responsible for the biconcave shape of rbc then second we have ankyrin and band 4.2 this band 4.2 and ankyrin binds spectrin to band 3 then third we have band 3 this band 3 is a transmembrane ion transporter protein it is a transmembrane ion transporter protein fourth protein is band 4 band 4 binds spectrin to glycophorin a transmembrane protein it binds spectrin to glycophorin a transmembrane protein so i will just draw draw a picture so that we will understand this uh, relationship clearly so this is the membrane and in the membrane we have two proteins so this here down we have spectrin okay that is the membrane and here we have spectrin so first we have band 3 band 3 is a transmembrane in the transport and we have glycophorin a okay so this is band 3 which is a transmembrane protein and glycophorin a is also a transmembrane protein so band 3 and glycophorin a is a transmembrane protein now this spectrin binds to the band 3 with the help of two proteins that is ankyrin and band 4.2 so ankyrin and band 4.2 helps in binding of spectrin to band 3 now band 4.1 will bind spectrin to glycophorin a so this is the band 4.2 and this is actin both these will bind spectrin to glycophorin a so so let us now learn some po important points about hereditary spirocytosis it is an autosomal dominant disorder and occurs due to the intrinsic defect in rbc membrane so because of that there is mutation of ankyrin followed by band 3 mutation is seen so here there is the band 3 is an anionic transport channel so this the, the, this is followed by mutation of spectrin or mu mutation of band 4.2 can also occur so because because of the mutation in the proteins present in the rbc membrane this will result in loss of membrane cytoskeletal proteins which normally maintain the integrity of the rbc membrane but because of this now the stability of the membrane is decreased so there is spontaneous loss of membrane fragments occurs whenever this this rbc is exposed to the stress so slowly has the fragments of the rbc lose uh, slowly the cytoplasm forces its forces the cell to assume the smallest diameter the smallest diameter um, for a cell is circle or sphere so the rbcs become microspirocytes so these rbcs which are microspirocytes so because they are microspirocytes they cannot be deformable if they are not deformable they cannot pass through the interendothelial fenestrations normally because of the biconcave nature of rbcs rbcs can easily pass through the uh, small small gaps that in the endothelium so because now rbc have become the spherical shaped they are there it is difficult for the rbcs to pass through the fenestrations in the venous sinusoids and as a result these cannot pass through the sinusoids so in the spleen it leads to the phagocytosis of rbcs occurs and finally it leads to extravascular hemolysis phagocytosis in spleen 
causes extravascular hemolysis then now um, if you see if i draw a diagram normally rbc is in biconcave shaped but now this will slowly lose its uh, parts because of stress slowly at the end it becomes spherocyte because of the spherocytic nature it loses its flexibility so it cannot pass through the smaller blood vessels leading to extravascular hemolysis here there is even loss of water which leads to erythrostasis so if you see the clinical features this there is anemia anemia is mild to moderate anemia with indirect bilirubin uh, because of indirect bilirubin there is jaundice formation jaundice is seen then we have splenomegaly increased bilirubin because this increased bilirubin will lead to pigment gallstone formation and rarely we can see leg ulcers if there is infection infection of parvovirus along with this hereditary spherocytosis it causes a plastic crisis so in laboratory examinations we will see that the because of anemia mean corpuscular volume decreases but the pathognomic for hereditary spherocytosis is increase in mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration this is pathognomic mean corpuscular hemoglobin will be normal obviously it is an anemia so there is decreased hemoglobin and because of hemolysis occurring in the spleen there is increased unconjugated bilirubin because of that there is increased urobilinogen and also there is increased fecal stercobilinogen is seen so then in hereditary spherocytosis there is decreased haptoglobin haptoglobin levels are decreased and if you see the peripheral smear in the peripheral smear we see microspherocytes are seen where we see small rbcs without central pallor are seen so these are the so these are the smaller rbcs which occur and they are round and there is no central pallor so we will have to see that this uh, spherocytosis have one important test that is of osmotic fragility test osmotic fragility test shows auto hemolysis so if we keep the rbcs in 0.9% of normal saline for 48 hours normally there is less than 4% of rbc destruction is seen but in uh, hereditary spherocytosis more than 15% of rbcs are destructed so there is auto hemolysis is seen in osmotic fragility test then we also have ectocytometry this ectocytometry is done to detect the shearing stress of rbc this ectocytometry is a recent test so if we see the treatment of uh, hereditary spherocytosis there is elective splenectomy is seen because of we hear this elective splenectomy will decrease the severity of anemia there is no change in rbc shape occurs because of this elective splenectomy and it also this hereditary spherocytosis will also cause increased chances of infection by um, uh, capsulated organisms because the spleen which is which has been removed so because of that it will predispose to increased infections with capsulated organisms like pneumococcus and haemophilus influenza this is the reason why we we prefer giving haemophilus influenza and pneumococcus vaccines before doing splenectomy complications are aplastic crisis increased infections and chronic hemolysis leading to gallstones pigment gallstones are the complications of hereditary spherocytosis so this is about hereditary spherocytosis there is one more disorder which is called has hereditary elliptocytosis we also have hereditary elliptocytosis which occurs due to the defect in spectrin so these are important disorder important points about hereditary spherocytosis thank you for watching